Morning guys, it's uh, Monday 9.30 here in Portland. It's raining like crazy, but um, kind of the nature of the beast when you live in an area that's so green. So, um, one thing I want to go over today, a couple of different things, is uh, what it means to jet a carburetor, why you do it, and um, what's required. So, I tell people when you think of a motor, think of it as a big air pump. It's moving, in, it's moving air in, it's moving air out. So, for example, this is a... Um, a uh, local customer's big Evo 94cc jog. Um, this is gonna be a, a pretty powerful, probably high 20 horsepower bike or something um, in a tiny little motor, so it should be pretty quick. But, so imagine this is your scooter engine, your Zuma, Vino, whatever, even if it's a four stroke, obviously four stroke's gonna be totally different. Um, but on this motor, okay, you've got your cylinders, your piston and everything here. You've got, this is where your intake manifold is on your Zuma or, or whichever bike you have. It's, some are gonna be different, of course, um, but just trying to explain general theory here. So whenever you change anything that's allowing more air to go into your motor and out the exhaust, you gotta change your jets, okay? Your main, jets, your main jet is what's gonna control the amount of, amount of fuel going in um, into your engine and, and uh, your combustion. So you've got your main jet and then you have a pilot jet. So for the Pliny, this is a Pliny CP carb. I just took it apart just for example here. Um, but before we go into kind of what's involved with the main jet here, I wanna go over why you need to change it and, and what scenarios you need to change it. So um, if you change your, your carburetor to a larger size carburetor, you change your air filter to allow more air in, you change your exhaust or you change your cylinder to a higher CC, you're gonna pull more air into this bike. So anytime you pull more air in, you also need to pull, pull in more fuel or you're gonna run lean and you're gonna seize your top end. So your fuel and oil is what is what lubricates the cylinder and keeps it cool. So if you're short on fuel or you're short on oil, um, you're gonna have a lack of lubrication and you're also gonna to run too hot, typically seizing your, your cylinder here. And I've seen um, rod issues or, or, or bottom end issues as well too with lack of lubrication. So because your, your fuel is gonna mix with your oil, so that's kind of a, um, well, it's, it's everything to make these things run right. So um, again, if you change, you know, on this bike, you're typically gonna have an intake manifold, you're gonna have a carburetor and an air box. If you take this air box off and you put on a pod filter or you drill holes in it or whatever to allow, introduce more air into your engine, you need to change your jetting. Um, and then with your exhaust, if your exhaust is bigger, de restricted, whatever, you gotta change your jetting as well. So. Um, whether or not you have an OEM carb or an aftermarket carburetor, there's gonna be the same. I will say if you have an original OEM carburetor, 90% of the time you cannot change your pilot jet. And your pilot jet, you have two jets typically in a carburetor. Uh, Delorto's have three, but two main jets you're concerned about is one that's your main jet that controls, like it's a little bit of a mix around half throttle to full throttle, I'll just say that. Um, it blends in with the pilot, of course, in a, in a how can I explain it? When you give a bike throttle, Depending on how far open this slide is, you're gonna, you're gonna, your fuel is gonna be coming from your your idle, your uh, your pilot jet, and it's going to mix, and then it's gonna go transfer over to your main jet. So, um, and I'll explain to you how that works, why it works, and, and what it does, and, and what you need to do. So, first off, again, car. If you change your carburetor, if you change your airbox, <clears throat> if you change your cylinder or your exhaust, you need to you need to uh, change your jetting. So um, I'll explain here. And again, I've already taken the bowl off this carb. This is a Pliny CP. This is your bowl. This is a really, really awesome carb. We sell a ton of these things and it's it's Italian made, which is really nice. So um, you've got your float here and your float is what controls the uh, level of fuel that's gonna be in your bowl, okay? As this bowl fills up with gas, this float is gonna close shut and it's gonna shut this valve here. Um, this little uh, valve here is gonna stop the flow of fuel. So in this carburetor, You've got your main jet here. This is your main jet, the big one in the middle. And then this is your, your pilot jet. I will say you need to make sure you use the right size screwdriver to take this pilot jet out. If you use the wrong one, you're gonna damage this pilot and you're gonna ruin it. You're gonna have to use it easy out to get it out. So this is your emulsion tube, okay? This has holes in it to, to atomize the mixture of gas and fuel. So this pilot jet simply comes out, obviously I've already pre-loosened it, but this pilot jet comes out like this and it's got a number on it. So, um, whether you have a Delorto, a Makuni, whatever, you pull your bowl off, which is this guy here. It's got screws holding it on. You pull a bowl off and you've got access to your jet. So you need to do your research on what jets are which and what size you need to go to. But anytime you add, introduce more air into your engine, 
you need to change this jet and you need to change this one. On an OEM carburetors, you typically cannot change this pilot jet. That's why when you go to a big bore kit and you do a bigger carburetor, or when you go to a big bore kit and do stuff, it's always best to run an aftermarket carburetor. So um, again, this is a Polini CP. This is your air idle mixture here. This is your idle speed mixture here. This is for vacuum, for a vacuum petcock, and this is for your oil mix if you have um, oil injection still. And this is your choke. So you start it, that's your choke and then it shuts down. So I'm gonna take the top cap off and kind of show you um, how this how this slide works and how it controls fueling on your main jet. So just bear with me here, I'll take that top cap off. So I'm gonna make this video somewhat short because I have, and thank you for, for everybody's orders, but um, we have massive, massive, massive amount of orders going out today. I'm gonna be working nonstop uh, filling those orders. So. Okay, so I pulled the top cap off. We've got a spring here that keeps the slide down, but I'm just gonna show you guys how this works. So this slide moves up and down, and, and as it does that, this needle, which I'll take out here, okay, this is your needle that controls the amount of fuel going through your main jet. That's your needle clip, and what that does is allows you to raise this needle up or down to allow more or less fuel in. And this has a taper to it as well. So I'm just gonna take out the main jet so you can see, but basically, this guy slides down the side there and you can see it drops right into the main jet and controls the amount of fuel as you open the slide. As you pull your cable, this slide is gonna open allowing more air in and as you can see, it's also gonna let in more fuel until you're wide open throttle and that main jet is wide open, but you can see how it meters it as, it's, as you're going up and down, okay? So that's why I kind of took it apart so you guys can kind of see how it works. But basically, this guy sits inside here, okay? And you're opening and closing metering the amount of fuel. So as you can see, obviously, if it's open a little bit, you're only allowing a little bit of fuel in, open it more and more and more. As it's tapered, it's gonna let more in until it's wide open. So that's how your main jet works. That's how your needle works. It's pretty basic stuff, but this helps you guys understand how it goes in. Also, I will say, if your slide, if you're having a problem, you do your carb and your slide's not all the way down, your, idle, your bike's running really high uh, RPM, when you start it, it's because your slide is not in properly. If you take this slide, See how it has a groove, every carb's different. If you look, there's a groove on that side, there's a little pin sticking out and there's a groove here. If you don't line that up, okay, and you get it sideways or whatever, it doesn't fit into place, it doesn't go down all the way. So you keep turning it, turning it, turning it, and it's the same with OEM carbs, they have a groove, drops right down. So if you have a problem with your bike running high, like crazy RPM when you start it, you've done some work, you spin this guy around, it'll half drop into one position, which obviously that's not the right one, and then you keep rolling around, rolling around and it'll drop right down like that. So if your car, if your slide doesn't drop right down like that, then you, you don't have it on right. So um, so hopefully that explains how the, how the uh, main jet works and how it's metered, um, but, and also how the slide lets in air as it lets in more air. So, and if you've got a bike and you're not jetted properly, right? You have it wide open, you're letting in all the air, but you're not letting in enough gas. So, the other thing too is when you shut your slide down to here, you're doing a wide open throttle pull, you shut your slide, now you've got that main jet shut. If you still have your stock pilot jet in and you're running a big bore kit, a pipe or whatever, you're getting enough fuel for a stock cylinder so you're gonna run lean and typically it's not gonna cool down. So a lot of times guys end up burning up their cylinders because they're, they're running a stock carburetor with, with work done to it and they're not running the OEM air box. So, so just kinda wanted to go over what jetting is, why it's important, um, how it controls your, your fuel and cools your bike down. So uh, one thing I suggest anytime you do a bike, uh, do a build, grab a uh, Trail Tech temp gauge at least because that's that's gonna be cheap insurance. They're 55 bucks with us. Ours have extensions where um, they'll, they'll be cheaper online without extensions, but they're not long enough to get to your headset. So um, <clears throat> your temp gauge, for example, on this bike, this is a temp gauge because it's a liquid cooled bike and it's gonna read the water temperature in the head. Um, if you have an air cooled bike, you're gonna put it around this, you're gonna put it around the spark plug here. It's a 14 millimeter ring that goes around the spark plug and tells you your temp. I like to tell people, um, I like to be in the range, so wide open throttle, um, I like to be in the range of uh, 350 to 375. I have never seized a cylinder, I have never overheated a bike ever but in that range, ever. I've never had any problems with all my bikes, or all the bikes run really good right in that range. Um, 
I've had some bikes up to about 420, 430. That's really, really, really bad. Um, but we were lean. It was in uh, uh, Tennessee, and the air and everything is different there, and all of our bikes ran super, super hot. So um, that being said, if you're low 300s, basically, <laughs> The lower you are, the less power you're gonna have, the more likely you are to foul plugs. The higher you are, the more power you're gonna get, but the higher risk you run of running lean. So I like to tell people 340, 350 to 375 is kind of the safe area. The more you go towards 375, the less room you have for air. Say you tune your bike wide open throttle, 375 is right where you are and it doesn't go higher than that. Um, you have less room for, for air, like let's say you go on a ride and you're Exhaust gasket starts leak. So let's say you're 375, right? Wide open throttle, and then you cool down, you go in and have a beer. Well, obviously don't do that, don't drink and ride. Uh, go in and, and do whatever it is you need to do. Um, and then your exhaust gasket forms a little leak, go out and ride. Now you've got less room for air because you're gonna, your exhaust gasket has a leak, you're gonna run leaner, because as your piston comes in, it's gonna pull air in, in through there, right? It's gonna, it's gonna pull air in that doesn't have fuel mixed through the exhaust leak. So your temps are gonna go up. So the higher you are to 375, the less room for error you have if you have a problem. Where the lower you are, if you've got an exhaust leak and say you're normally 340, well now you may be running 370 and you can at least make it home. Whereas if you're 370 and then you have, and then you have a problem on your ride, then you're gonna be up in the 400s trying to ride. I had a Honda Neo like this one um, and I was 360, 370-ish and then um, blew out an exhaust gasket before we started selling the copper ones, which is the paper ones, which suck and they blow out. When they blow out, you can't fix them. Um, so it was uh, me and Ed, we were out on Highway 84, um, way out that by the Vista House, if you know Portland. Uh, not I 84, but out east. And uh, we had to pull over and I had to take a bunch of chewing gum foil and bend it, bend it, bend it, and make a gasket out of it just to limp home. And I could give it throttle, let off. Give it throttle, let off. And it would just spike to like, 390, 395, and then back down again. 390, 395, back down again. So it got to a point where it was close to seizing and then it cooled down. Close to seizing just to get myself home. Um, had I had that bike tuned to maybe 340, 350, then at wide open, then maybe I wouldn't have been quite so high with that exhaust leak. Could have gotten home a little easier. But that being said, it's not, I typically carry exhaust gases with me. It's not a problem anymore with the copper rings because I've never seen one fail because um, the copper doesn't blow out. The paper glow blows out with the copper gasket, you still have that copper ring, where if the paper blows out and you have no copper ring um, in the gasket, then you're, you're out of luck. So um, hopefully that explains jetting, what it is, why it's important, um, why I always stress if guys with the Honda Dio's or Honda Leach or Zuma's when they run pod filters on stock carburetors and you can't adjust that pilot, uh, how, you, how and why you run lean and, and, and what you're gonna do to your motor. Um, and uh, um, some carburetors, some carburetors you can change the pilots out, some you can't when it comes to OEM. Uh, Honda or Yamaha Zoom has actually have replaceable pilots, but I've never been able to find one for sale at all. So um, I don't think Yamaha, I don't know if Yamaha even offers different sizes on their OEM pilots. So if you have a stock carburetor, you do a bunch of work and you don't want to put an aftermarket carburetor on it, leave your stock airbox on. Um, it's really going to help. It's gonna help with your pilot jet as far as getting a little bit more more fuel rather than air. Um, definitely change your, your your main jet. I know there's some stores out there that um, will sell kits and advise using stock main jet. Anytime you change the amount of air coming into your bike, you need to add fuel. Your air filter, your carburetor, your um, air box, if you open it up, your cylinder and your exhaust. You change any of those components, you have to change your jetting in your bike. So uh, reading your spark plugs is a big deal. Um, but I, I typically hook up a temp gauge and I run it and 90% of the time um, it, it works out being a safe mix. So um, hopefully that, ex that helps you guys understand jetting. And again, um, you know, whether you have a Delorto, whether you have a GY6 carb, um, whether you have a Makuni or a Kian or Polini or OK or whatever, the theory is going to be the same behind the jetting and kind of how the operations work on a carburetor. So, um, and, the, and there's also, I could do a whole nother video on these C-clips and how they work and, and what the theory is behind that, but it's essentially just changing, changing, it, changing uh, at which point that needle is metering the fuel on your main jet. So that's kind of more of a fine adjustment. The needle's more of a fine adjustment where the main and pilots are, are a pretty big deal. So um, thanks for watching. If you guys have questions, post up in here, things you want to see. Um, again, 
this week and next week are going to be really, really busy here. So uh, we're hiring help, um, but uh, we will probably be a little bit harder to get a hold of on the phone. Email's best right now because right now that phone just keeps going and going. Um, we're trying to get to it, but but the more time I spend on the phone, the less time I, I can spend packing and organizing orders and whatnot. So it's kind of a fine balance. But um, we're getting busy here in Portland, and uh, we appreciate all the views and shares and. Uh, We'll do a video on Wednesday, again, a live video on Wednesday. Um, but again, this channel's for you. Post up what you wanna see. Post up if you wanna see pictures of our bikes, pictures of video walkthroughs of customers' bikes. Um, this spring and summer, we're gonna have a ton, so make sure you subscribe and uh, get notifications on that stuff. So um, again, thanks for watching and have a good Monday.